Okay, everyone. Hello, I'm Sally Snyder from the Library Commission. I spent the last 10 minutes trying to tidy up my desk and gave it up because there it is <laughs> right behind me. I'm going to be talking about um, the Collaborative Summer Library Program and some of the changes that are on the way for next summer and actually right now, some of them. I hope you're excited about that. This is Encompass Live and it happens every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Central Time. And we talk about all kinds of things somehow related to libraries. So it might be a staff person like me today. It might be someone from another state who has a great project going on. It could be um, all kinds of things, a, a demonstration of something that's working or a discussion about possibilities. And that's all going with Encompass Live every week, except in a few weeks, we won't have one because that's when the um, Iowa Library Association and the Nebraska Library Association have a joint conference and we take that week off so everybody can go that's able to to the conference and have a great time. Again, I'm going to talk about the Collaborative Summer Library Program and um, first I just want to say a little bit about the history of the Collaborative. The CSLP, which is the short version of it, and everybody in Central Plains Library system. Yeah, when you named your system, I cried. No, I didn't. But it's CSLP for Summer Library Program, and Central Plains Library System is CPLS. So keep that in mind when you're when you're typing to go to the CSLP website. It began in 1987. 10 Minnesota regional library systems had developed a summer library program for children. They chose their theme, um, created artwork, and selected incentives and things for their libraries to share. Well, pretty soon state libraries were asking to join. And because why do it all separately when we can all do it together? That made perfect sense to too many people. Right now, we include representation from 48 states plus the District of Columbia five territories, American Samoa, Guam, the Mariana Islands, Marshall Islands, the Federated States of Micronesia, and Bermuda, which is a British overseas territory, and the Grand Cayman Islands, which is out of the United Kingdom. And how those are different or the same, I'm not sure, but they're all partial or complete members of CSLP. And for those of you watching from Nebraska, Nebraska is a complete member. And we joined in 1997 because that seemed like the thing to do. And it's been really great for our state. I wanna say right now for all of our Nebraska libraries that while we, while the CSLP has a theme every year or a slogan and artwork, which you're welcome to use for your summer reading program, sometimes something comes along that's like your, your city is celebrating its and a special anniversary and you don't follow the theme, that's fine. I still, because Nebraska provides a manual for every public library in the state, we will still send you a manual and you can use ideas then, or one of the new things is you can use it later, which I'll be talking about more. But first let's go to the Collaborative Summer Library Program page. And I was really excited about this because when I was looking at things yesterday, it still had this past summer's, um, Oh gosh, what's that called? A universe of stories <laughs> up. And today, look, next year, imagine your story is up on the page. So thank you, Collaborative Summer Library Program. Many of you already have your pass, your password and, and um, login information. So I'm going to log in as me. And try and guess my password. So now I'm logged in. For a lot of things that I'm going to show you, you do need to be logged in. If you have never, if you have one, you still have the same one until you ask for it to change. So don't worry about that. If you have never gotten one, when you click up there for login, there's a place where you can say, um, create a, an account and it'll take a day or two. Well, it might take a little longer this week because I know that Karen Day is on her way to ARSL in Vermont, I think it is. So watch out, um, that will take a little longer. She approves um, who joins because this is for libraries. Um, school libraries as partners, public libraries are our main focus right now. So um, here we are on the main page, like I said, and um, 
you can see the the bright colors from parts of the posters going by and you can look through here for things you might want to learn about the different programs the um but i'm going to go uh, bore you just a little bit with the about section and this is where i got my information down at the bottom cslp began in 1987 so that's good information to know there's also the mission statement who's on the board of directors i'm one of the board members our organizational coordinator is a great guy luke kralik who was hired i believe in april of 2017 and um, he has been a, a ball of fire getting things moving in the direction we've been going and i'll talk about that and get some more in just a minute our other person is Karen Day, as I mentioned. She is in Iowa, and she has been with the Collaborative for more years than we want to mention, and she's going to retire pretty soon, but that's okay. So here we are um, with Luke, and really things started changing. Uh, the first board, the first in-person board meeting I went to was in um, September of 2017, and that's where we worked on a new long range plan. And I have to confess, when I heard we were gonna work in person on a long range plan, I said, oh, I don't want to, but it was great. Luke made it fun and effective. And really we all felt like we knew where we thought the collaborative needed to go and what would be more responsive to the membership who are the reason we all exist, all the libraries in all the states who want this programs and manuals and incentives and posters that's why we're to get where we get together um so luke had a lot to do hired in april putting together a, a planning session in september and he did great so a lot of what we wanted to do um i oh i have it written right here a big thank you to upstart because when we first formed and this when Nebraska came on in 97, they were already working with High Smith, Upstart, other names I can't remember. They were great. They handled things that we didn't know how to do and we didn't have time to do them. And they did what we needed. Got us artists, got us posters, the reading records, incentives, all that. And we are very appreciative. And they are still with us as providing the paper items for this upcoming year. This will be the first year that the collaborative is pretty much in charge of everything instead of Upstart Highsmith. And we're pretty keen about that because while they did a great job with a contract with someone, it's a two year contract and they can't change things right away because that would cost more money and that's not in the contract and that makes it hard. So now we can say, hey, let's look into this. We think this will work, let's give it a try and and then we'll it'll work or it won't and we'll move on from there so um i'm going to go on to the next page i have laid out which is the most exciting and thrilling rules of use yes everybody wants to know about those well actually they're great um I, if anybody listening has ever looked at the former rules of use they were they're by necessity but they were very specific and step by step and they also um were in some ways driven by highsmith upstart and that's not bad because they had the contract they had the the agreement with the artists and things like that it was how it needed to be but now we're we the collaborative i say we because i'm on the board we are in charge of it as a collaborative and so we can say what works and what doesn't. And when a, an issue or an idea comes up as a group, the board can look at it. We can ask the membership, what do you think about changing this? And find out where people want to be with the next thing. And the only part I really, really, really want to point out to you, and I'm, I don't even think I'm going to zoom down there. Let's see, under, let's see, just scroll down. You can see there's an intro, manual artwork and slogans. If we go down to artwork and slogans, oh, this is the crux of things, the artwork. Under restricted, see we have permitted, 
here's some things that are permitted. There are some restrictions. And really, as you read them, I think it will make sense to you. We don't want you to change we don't want you to change the artwork except you can make the whole thing bigger or smaller to fit on your page that you want to use. Um, you will be provided with color artwork or black and white versions, and that'll be on your either on the web page or on your USB or however you get your manuals. So that's okay. The biggest thing is this last one right here. No use of CSLP art on items similar to products offered for sale by CSLP, with the exception of paper goods. You can create your own reading record or um, award certificates because um, the way that the CSLP stays in solvent and we can hire an artist is because we sell the t-shirts and the um, posters and things like that. Well, that's a paper product, isn't it? T-shirts and incentives and, and other things. Um, so it says that just below. It's the CSLP is a nonprofit organization that generates revenue by selling the products offered in its catalog and online storefront. Revenue generated is used to support CSLP's mission, fund future programs, and cover operating costs. So again, you can read through this. If after you read through this, if your question you don't feel like your question was answered or addressed, um, email me or your state representative if you're listening from another state, and we will get in touch with Karen Day or Luke Kralik and say, here's a question about this. How do you interpret it? Do we need to have a discussion amongst the people who wrote the rules of use, the committee or, or the board members? And we'll come up with an answer for you. The answer might be, we have to wait and make a decision after we ask the membership, for example. So I hope you can, can be patient with that. Now we'll go um, program themes and other things. We have different, I, I had to get away from the rules of use because you know, I can't bore you to, you probably all left already. <laughs> anyway, there's different, the different age groups is laid out, but in the recent past, we started using the same slogan for every age group, and I think that's working very well. Most people are happy with it. Initially, when we first added the teen program, the teen librarians at the meeting said, you must have a different slogan or the teens won't do it. And at that time, I think that was true, but things change. So there's also a lot of other information here, inclusion resources, um, summer reading program resources, things about summer slide and libraries and summer food, all kinds of things that you might want to read about when you have time, because I know you don't have any time, but um, it's still a possibility for you. And then I'm going to see if I can get to the, to the, oh, I can't get to the shop from here because I don't have a card or an account. Well, let's find out if I have an account. I don't see it says, hello, Sally Snyder. Um, it says I could have one, I just haven't done that yet. But fear not because I already opened a tab to the shop. <laughs> okay, here's a part that that account part, I don't know because I haven't ordered online. I have ordered with the paper manual, which interestingly, here now we are at the shop. And if you scroll down, you will see the catalog. I will be receiving print catalogs as we have always had that they're not here yet. So um, keep in mind that they will come in the mail with your manual that's gonna be most for you, for most of you a USB. But you can download a copy of the print catalog. I'm trying to make it do this all the time, it wouldn't. So anyway, just a, a quick look at, so here's, here's a look at the print catalog and it just scrolls up, gives you again the basic information. I was reminding myself, don't go too fast through all these pages because people watching need to not get seasick. So here's how the manual or the, the print um, brochure is put together with the um, imagine your story, um, posters and bookmarks, etc. Let's see if I go back to where. And here again, we're back to the main web page. Now, what I like about this, and I, I didn't, like I said, I didn't order online before, so I didn't explore that page very much. 
But look here, you can look at bags and clothing. Oh, let's look at some clothing. And here is the children's, the, the design for the children's program. So you, uh, you can interchange it for anyone who wants to wear this shirt or that shirt. If you click here on this button, then you get a bit bigger picture. So this is a character that was created for our program this year. And it's Puss in Boots and he, ha he or she has books on a gray t-shirt. So it's very fun. And now, because I, I know where it is, if we go to programming and promotion, then you can see the puppet that's designed on this, um, on this idea. And it's a puppet that you could order too. I'll just mention that today's the first Wednesday of the month and that's what the siren was about, if you could hear it. They just run the sirens the first Wednesday of every month. Did I say Monday? Sorry, I meant Wednesday. Here's our puppet, Puss in Boots. I think he's great. So he's on the shirt, and he's also a puppet, and you'll see him on some other things too. But I'm going back to clothing because I know people are interested in the clothing. Here is the teen design. So a darker shirt with this pretty two colors of purple or lavender and imagine your story and a book. Very fun. I think that's the one I like. I don't know. I like the little Puss in Boots too. And back. Where's oh, this one? This is the golf shirt. So it, it just has the, the slogan in white on a purple shirt. I like those colors together. So that's good too. And there's, oh, this one, one more. This is the adult des design. It's a little hard to see, let me see, uh, a little hard to see. But it's a, a row of books, it says imagine your story under it and a row of books with a little like Robin Hood type hat tucked on top in that lovely rose or whatever color you want to call it. I, I like that too. So the idea is what, I, while we're looking at this, I also want to tell you what the collaborative decided to do was we contracted with a fulfillment center. They're the people that are receiving everything into their center and then they're shipping it out. We did a test run with some shipment, it went great. So here's hoping everybody's shipment goes very well. Um, we put out an RFP for three distinct parts of the program. One were the paper products, which Upstart won that contract. One was for the incentives, and one was for, I think, the t-shirts, et cetera. So um, we divided it up that way, that way, because for a long time, every time we put out an RFP for a new contract with Upstart, the only people who could really do it were Upstart. And there's nothing wrong with that. But we thought if we divide it up a little bit, we'll have more um, options. People can up, uh, offer to do one or another portion of it. And that's it. So this is the first year. Here's hoping we still think it's really good when it's, it's all taken care of. Um, this was all part of, well, there had been discussions beforehand, but this was all part of that long range planning meeting I talked about in September of 2017, where we really looked at what's our timeline for getting these things done? What's the timeline for um, being ready for the next summer? So another thing that we're hoping is going to happen, which we think it will, is that things will become available a little sooner. The, um, the store is online now. You could order something today. Um, I think yesterday Luke sent out an email saying, we have two orders already. So we were like, yay, somebody ordered something. Um, if you have your, your um, name, username and password to log in, um, he said something was acting a little goofy. I can't remember what it was, but it's gonna be fixed by next week. So if something acts goofy for you, we really think it's gonna be fixed by next week. So look for that. Um, I was, I'm going to show you a few more things on here. 
And I'm going to talk a little bit about the manual too, though I cannot show you the manual yet. It's very close, but I can talk about it a little bit. Now let's look at some bags because those are those are good too. And I'll show you the the um, drawstring plastic bags. Um, have that Puss in Boots Boots character on it again, um, and you get 25. It, we I, everything should tell you how many you get if more than one and then the cost is eight dollars and we do have categories of under ten dollars let's just click on that and see what we come up with i don't know if it's in okay all of these things are under ten dollars for either one like the bulletin board decorator i imagine that's only one one package of dragons let's look at the dragons it's a package of 12 dragons for a dollar eighty, so yes, it would be one one bag, one package of the dragons. So we're trying to help people who well, we're all on a limited budget. I know your budget isn't great, but this is a way to guide you towards things that are affordable, and we hope you have choices that you you like. Um, let's just look at this because the. The children's t-shirt is $5.75 to $9.75. Oh, here are all the sizes. You can order up to a women's ex triple extra large at this point. And that's all you have to do is click women's triple extra large. You want one and it is going to be more because of the larger size, we know that, but it's still $9.75. Um, in the future, we're hoping that going even larger will be possible. This is, since this is our first year, we're starting where we have been and thinking about, because I've been pushing for larger sizes, just so you know. So hopefully this will, will move into larger sizes that people need. So triple extra large right now is what this one will come in. So we know that. Let's go back to our other page because I found that curious. Oh, I love the color your own poster. There's a color your own table um, table mat, not mat, but table covering, something like that. And I think just laying the poster out or the table covering out and, and some markers or crayons, whatever you want, the kids will have a great time coloring in different parts of the design. Let's take a closer look at this design. So there's the castle and the dragon, the town, and another little castle over there. Very fun. I think those are under incentives. Let's just look a little bit at the incentives. There's our um, puppet again and some dragons and the uh, the dragon grabbers. I know you're all going to go explore this more yourself. You've probably left already. <laughs> but these are all kinds of items that have been in the catalog before. Um, it might be a slightly less total number of items because again, like I said, this is our first time for being in charge of everything. So we didn't we didn't buy every single unicorn type product or or dragon, but we were um, we did um, look at quite a few choices and possibilities. So while we look at this page, I'm just going to take a minute to, to back up a little bit. I got so excited to go to the, the store, I forgot to talk about the manual. So let's just go back a minute. And the manual is going to look a little different than it has in the past. I think it's going to be a nice change. It looks cleaner and more usable. It's not going to have 8,000 ideas poured in there, but some fewer, but very good, well worked out um, ideas for programs and activities, etc. So the way it's laid out is two thirds of the page talks about the idea and step by step what you need, what you, um, how this, how it works. And the, the right side, the, the one third of the page on the right side, will contain um, added information or here's how you can change it to make it a, a teen program if it's designed as a children's program. Here's how you can make it be an adult program. 
There are also some passive programs in there. I didn't look at every single chapter, but I looked at quite a bit of the manual. And I think it has a nice variety of activities. Some need very little money spent on them. Some might need a little bit more. I can tell you the chapter titles if this will help you at all. Imagine in your mind what things might be happening. The chapters are Once Upon a Time, A Hero's Journey, Magical Creatures, Timeless Tales, Common Threads, and A New Twist on an Old Tale. Those are the, the chapter headings. So the activities fit under those chapters in some way or another. And um, we again, we will be sending out mostly USBs. I have a few print manuals for people who absolutely can't work with the with the um, USB versions of it. So I forgot to say, if you have questions, you can type them into the question box and um, I will be checking from time to time to see what questions might be in there because I want everybody to have a chance to, to ask what they wanna know and I might know the answer and I might not, it, it's possible. Um, and at first when we picked this, date for this session, I thought, well, we'll be, everything will probably be pretty much in place by now. And it really is pretty much in place. And there's just a few things that are still need a little more time to get squared away, like the manual. Um, but the, the catalog is online. And there's also, aside from, from the shop, which I kind of spent some time on, we do have like summer reading resources. Did I tell you that already, didn't I? The summer slide, the, I like the, the health programming for library has some very good information in there. So take a, take a minute to look at that. And here's another item. You can look at this and look way down here at the bottom, 30 plus years of themes. Let's just look at that for a minute because this is fun. 1987 is when CSLP started, remember? And then it, it goes along lots of things up till this year. Uh, this year was a universe of stories. Next year is Imagine Your Story, and you can see who the artist is right next to it. 2021 will be Tales and Tales, Selena Yoon. 2022 is All Together Now, which is all about working together for better for a better world and for better things. And 2023, um, we don't, we, that's what I was asking you to send in for that year. I sent some I good ideas on water and STEM and can't remember the other one, but I sent on the ideas that got the most input. I got the most people saying, here, let's use this idea. And so at our meeting later this, well, in the middle of this month is when we'll see uh, what the ones shake down to, and then we'll vote on what we want the, they call it a theme. I like to call it a topic because I think theme and slogan are too close to the same idea in our heads. So I like to call it a topic and then come up with a slogan. And some people send in slogans along with their ideas. And I have that in my mind too. And then as you look down, you can see who the illustrators are. I love this, that it goes up to 2023 from 1987 and then it starts at 2023 and goes back down and we get to 2005, which was Dragons, Dreams and Daring Deeds. I know that because it was Stephen Kellogg who did it. So again, you can look and see what, what are the different themes we've done through the years. And um, so next year, when we ask you for another idea, another topic, you can say, well, look, I, I, like, I liked Go Wild for Libraries. Let's do something like that again. And you can send that in to your state representative. Going back to where we were. The, the web page, maybe you've noticed the web page is different now too. It used to have, um, there's the line things up here, the menu. I don't, I don't know if that's on this page or not. Anyway, it used to have the lines here and now instead it goes across like this and you can see the different topics. Here's the manual downloads. Uh, if, now for each, I think for each year, you have to obtain an access code. Even if you've already got your membership, 
for um, logins in there, you still have to obtain the, the next that next year's um, online access. Access. I guess that's that's this year, 2019. Next year, it'll be different. Terms of use really just has a couple of short paragraphs in here. I think the rules of use are better for your information. Um, if anybody has any questions at this point, just let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to keep showing you the catalog because there's a lot in there and it's pretty exciting. And I think we have a great amount of, of items, incentives, and paper products to show you. So I'm going to watch for questions typed in. And I'm going to go back to showing you items. Oh, reading records, stickers, and, and certificates. I always want to know what the stickers are. So we have mini stickers, which are generally aimed at the reading record. One, one package of mini stickers is enough for one package of timed reading records. I like how we've got those matched up together now. I believe they didn't used to, and someone said, you know, why don't you have these be the same amount? Great idea. So here's what this, the mini stickers look like. And we have two different versions of our Puss in Boots and um, Frog Prince and Jack and the Beanstalk and other fairy tale characters. The other stickers are, these are the bigger stickers. Click those and look. Little Red Riding Hood and the and the Wolf. Again, Jack and the Beanstalk and, and uh, Puss in Boots and the Tiger. And um, so you have, again, your, your standard or uh, reading records, which some people still use. You have the name across the top and then write in whatever books or titles you've been reading, if that's the way you want to go. And the other, and then there's some timed reading records. And again, you can make up your own. If you want to do a, um, what am I trying to say, a bingo sheet and have them explore other parts of the library. You can take some of the clip artwork from the um, artist or and make your own that fits how you want to have your kids record their reading. So here's where your mini stickers would fit in this one for however much time each mini sticker would represent. Each little circle could represent a quarter of an hour or a half an hour, whatever you want to encourage kids to, to read or be read to. Bookmarks, oh yes. There's the children book, bookmarks. I know there's teen and adult bookmarks over there. We'll get to those in a minute. Here's the Spanish language ones. I haven't shown you much Spanish, so cuéntame, cuen, cuéntame. To Historia. Tell me your story. So you get a package of 200 for 495. Hopefully you think that's a good deal like I do. And oh, I forgot to mention, when you focus in on one thing, I should show you this bigger picture. There you go. They also show you related products. And then over here on the side are recently viewed products. So if you're hopping, hopping and skipping around like I am and, and you're looking at things and you go, well, now wait a minute, where was that t-shirt I wanted? Or where were those, um, where that uh, color your own poster? It's along here on the side, unless you do too much skipping around and it drops off the bottom eventually. But it helps you come back to ones that you were interested in to find them again, which is also very helpful. So let's look at teen and adult and all they have in there is bookmarks for that. Here's the adult bookmark which is off of the adult poster. Imagine your story. And this is so fun because everybody's reading and the imagination that's coming out of their heads and the book together combined is the, um, the yellowish drawing around them, which I think is a great idea. And again, you get 200 bookmarks for 4.95, so that's pretty good. Let's just look at the teen bookmarks. Here's the Spanish. 
again, the same Cuéntame to Historia. And this is based off of the teen poster. So when I didn't show you the teen poster, did I? Oh, and here's the yard sign. See how I jump? Let me just show you this in the, there we go. The teen poster has a top and a bottom and um, they, they grow off the same way. I should just go show you that so you can see it rather than me try to describe it. Oops. Excuse me. Posters. Here it is. Make it bigger. So you see the division here is kind of right here. There's things going up that way and then there's things growing that way. So you have two tops and the bottom is kind of the middle. A couple of dragons and a phoenix probably is that and other people and creatures all around on the poster. So you might decide this is the poster you want to use for the program and, and buy this one and not the other ones because that's entirely up to you. But I did want to look, I didn't look at this yesterday, the outdoor yard sign. So I'm always curious about that. So, and that has the characters from the children's um, poster there with space for you to write something on about your library or come to the library or anything you want to say there. Story time every day. At, oh, don't please don't have it every day. <laughs> Story time every Wednesday or whatever. And it fits into your, into your, um, into that space. So that's helpful. Oh, magnetic bookmarks. I love these things, although don't get your credit card next to them. So, my, so there's four different designs and they all just kind of hook over the page and, and uh, the magnets hold it there so it doesn't fall out, which is nice. And again, we have Jack and the Beanstalk, the Little Mermaid and the Tiger and Puss in Boots. So you can use those. You get a package of 12 for 650. So that's a little bit more expensive per item because of the design and the magnets. A quick look at some of the incentives we saw earlier. Yes, here we are. But interestingly, look, there's more pages of various incentives. And there's your lapel pin. I have, whoops, I have this past summer's pin on today. Card holder containers. Let's look, look at that. That would be maybe for adults or teens, but maybe kids want to put their library card in it. Good point. That, I like that color, obviously. So you get a package of 12 of those for $6.50, which is nice. And the story painting sheets are very popular. Oh, I love these. My my great niece is keen on these. I'm going to have to buy some for her. These are the slap wristbands. So you have, um, these are the designs. I like, shh, I'm reading. <laughs> so you, you can get a, a package of those. It's um package of 48 for 325. Well, she's not going to need 48, but I bet she gives them to her friends. And there's a story reading light for only $1.95. I'm going to have to buy one of those too because those, that's reasonable. We have some pinwheels and star wands, a variety of items. I do have a question from somebody. It says, I got a bit confused. Where do folks get the access code to download the I think he's asking about the manual. Um, if you, once you can log in, once you have your username and password, you can log in and then you can go to the manual download page. We should just go there. And it will say you need to get the, um, you need to get the manual. So let's just go here. Let's see. The 
happens is just select your state so that we know they know whether you're a full your state is a full member or a partial member so california illinois minnesota and virginia are partial members and then you need to um, for those guys they need to fill out that form you select your state and then you do the next step i don't know what um there we go bing you put in your name and your email and then you submit the form and you will get an email back saying here's the access code and you only have to do that the first time once you've done that then you have the access code and you can get in as many times as you want and they do ask that um, the online manuals and the usbs etc etc be shared amongst the people at the live in the library working in the library but they don't want you you putting it up on some kind of uh, access to everybody um, item for the world to um, jump in and grab it because it's our intellectual property so to speak and we don't want everybody to have free access and I know that sounds mean but there you are so that's how the the manual getting the manual codes work that was a good question thank you now let's see where else? Let's see if I can back up. There we go. Over here, there is a, a telephone number if you need some information or um, have a question about a product. Or you can send an email to customer serve at CSLP. I meant to say that right away. The, the collaborative's main page of their web page is cslp reads r e a d s dot org all lowercase and that's get you to the main page where you can log in and then you can explore wherever you want to go after that so um, jot that down or um, you can also look for for it on google etc you can find it well, I think I've, I've probably overdone showing you different parts of the web, of the sales page, for lack of a better word. And I know that many of you will, when you have a chance, go and explore and see what kinds of things you might want. Or you might just decide to download the, the PDF catalog and print it off so you have a chance to, to take a look at it. And then you can go on the web page to order, or you can send in the paper order whichever way you want to go. I might even get ex uh, crazy and, and order online this year for myself. I'm going to go one more page just so you can look. Oh, one more thing, the Wizard's Bruce, the last thing on the last page. Um, I hope I've given you an idea of how things are changing, what's different, what might be mostly the same but under different management for example like the the online uh catalog um the the pdf catalog looks it's organized a little differently but it looks very similar to me as to the previous catalogs but i like i said i haven't done the shopping online that much i've looked through it a few times but i can't really compare the pages as well as people who who look at it each year maybe can and the reasons behind it why things were done are being done differently why um because i like to know the why 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 did you change that and basically it was to be responsive to the librarians people were asking for things like larger size t-shirts and so it's going to be a little bit longer but i'm hoping after next year that'll be in the works other things um, that people have asked for. So um, you might notice that there aren't quite as many incentives as previous people on the board told me that because again, I don't look at it as closely because I don't, I don't get that much. Everybody else out there goes, what are you gonna get? Balloons or pencils or other things? And they're in here. There's balloons and there's pencils in here, as well as some fun things that kids might enjoy. Pixelated foam swords, who doesn't want that? play with it outside right <laughs> okay well um there not being any more questions and we've pretty much 
come to everything I had written down that I wanted to be sure and let you know about. I'm going to just talk about next week for a minute. Next week's Encompass Live is about the grants being offered from the Library Commission. We're going to talk about all four types of grants. Uh, so, of course, not a whole lot of time on everyone, but some basic information. And hopefully, if you have questions about that, you'll be able to come to that, um, that program or watch it after the fact and find out the answers to your questions or who to contact here at the Commission about your particular questions. So again, that's um, next week at 10 a.m. Central Time for Encompass Live. And this week, um, I'm Sally Snyder, the Children's and Young Adult Library Services Coordinator for the Library Commission. I'm also, as I said, a board member of the Collaborative Summer Library Program right now. And a new election's coming up a little later this month, and maybe I'll be a board member for a little longer. Who knows? It could happen. Thank you for joining us today, and I hope that this was helpful to you. I hope you are ready for the changes and kind of know what to expect now. The manuals will be probably coming um, in October, maybe a little earlier, we're hoping. We'll see. And um, whatever format you received last year, my plan is to send you that same format this coming year. So if you want something different, let me know. Um, you are allowed to just have online access without a USB or a print manual. I don't, I'm not even sure if they're offering DVDs anymore because uh, the year I bought too many of those because so many libraries told me their, their um, computer doesn't have a DVD drive anymore or a CD drive. So I went with the USBs. Anyway, more information again. But thank you for joining us today or online after the fact. And I hope this was helpful. And please, if you have questions, email me here at the Library Commission, sally.snyder at nebraska.gov, all lowercase. And I'll, if I can't answer your question, I'll ask Luke or Karen and see what they can tell us that will answer your question to the best of our ability. Thank you again and have a great rest of the day. And See you next week.